Tomo News presents Volcano Eruptions. Volcano Villarica in southern Chile erupted on Tuesday morning. Chilean officials issued a red alert on Monday and thousands of people were evacuated from the area prior to the explosion. Volcano Villarica is one of the most active volcanoes in South America. A stratovolcano, Villarica was formed by many layers of hardened lava and volcanic ash. Villarica also has a crater at the brim, created when the volcano's magma chamber was emptied after a previous large eruption. As with most stratovolcanoes, Villarica is capable of erupting with great force because gases dissolved in the magma increase pressure within the volcano. The gas is released at the top along with the magma. Prior to the eruption, 3,385 people were evacuated from two nearby towns as a precaution after Chilean officials noticed activity in Villarica's crater this past week. Villarica erupted on Tuesday morning at around 3 a.m. local time, spewing lava and ash 1,000 meters into the air. Volcanic ash from the explosion is expected to cover considerable distances and travel to parts of neighboring Argentina. Sometimes your only option is to run. When a volcano erupts big time, it spits out a fast-moving and incredibly destructive mass of material known as a pyroclastic flow. And according to the United States Geological Survey, if you ever find yourself in the path of one, you should run in the opposite direction and run fast. Pyroclastic flows are made up of a basal flow of volcanic ash, lava, rock, and gases, which move beneath a cloud of ash. Their temperatures can exceed 1,000 degrees Celsius, and they can move at 700 kilometers per hour. Typically, pyroclastic flows move downslope, but they can go uphill when the ratio of gas to ash is higher. This is known as a pyroclastic surge. These dense pyroclastic surges can even move over water. Pyroclastic flows generally destroy everything in their path, including vegetation, buildings, and people. There are generally two kinds of pyroclastic flow. The first type forms when an eruption column cools and the ash becomes too dense to maintain an upward thrust. The second type is rarer and occurs when so much pressure builds up inside a volcano that it erupts laterally and boils over. The last known example of this is when Mount St. Helens in Washington State erupted in 1980. So there you have it. If you ever happen to be near a volcano when it blows its top, now you know what to do. The Ring of Fire is home to 90% of the world's earthquakes. Hundreds were killed and more injured when two killer earthquakes hit Japan and Ecuador over the weekend. Despite occurring only 32 hours apart, experts believe the two are not related. The only commonality is that both are located in the seismically active Ring of Fire. The Ring of Fire is a horseshoe-shaped arc around the Pacific Ocean that extends from South America all the way to New Zealand. At about 25,000 miles long, its most visible features are the volcanoes dotting the coast, roughly 75% of all active volcanoes on Earth. Throughout history, cataclysmic eruptions have occurred in this area, so Johnny Cash was on spot when he sang that the Ring of Fire burns, burns, burns. 90% of the world's earthquakes also occur along the ring, caused by the sliding of tectonic plates, huge slabs of the Earth's crust. When plates slide horizontally past each other, some parts get stuck. Built up stress in those areas eventually cause the rock to break or slip and the plates to lurch forward, causing earthquakes. Plates that collide form convergent plate boundaries, which give rise to volcanoes through subduction. Those that pull apart form divergent boundaries, which become the site for seafloor spreading and rift valleys. A less powerful quake in Tonga also occurred Sunday, it too is believed to be unrelated to those in Ecuador and Japan. Despite this, an increase in global seismic activity in recent years is still cause for concern. Volcano Rising Scientists have located the magma source of an Italian supervolcano that's considered one of the most dangerous in the world. Campi Flegre is a volcanic caldera to the west of Naples, which last erupted in 1538, but was responsible for a series of small earthquakes in the 1980s. 
Researchers who have long puzzled about where the caldera's magma is coming from have now pinpointed the location of a hot zone about 4 kilometers under the nearby city of Pozzoli. From 1982 and 1984, rising gas and magma caused the ground in the crater to swell, but was prevented from rising to the surface by a deep rock formation. The magma instead spread out laterally, causing minor earthquakes. The caldera has grown hotter since, and with pressure building, scientists fear it could soon erupt and put the entire region at risk. Volcanologists cannot say for sure what the scale of any future eruption could be, but are closely monitoring Campi Flegri. If Yellowstone blows, it's goodnight Vienna. A volcanic eruption at Yellowstone National Park would be an American natural disaster on a scale that the country has never seen. The event would potentially see millions of casualties and wipe out the West Coast, with its ashfall stretching far beyond U.S. borders. This would cause a volcanic winter, during which widespread starvation would be a threat. According to UN estimates, global food reserves could last only 74 days. Fortunately, the actual chances of that happening are 1 in 730,000, and America's top brains are on the case to stop it from even happening. To preempt such a catastrophe, NASA has developed a plan to drill underneath Yellowstone and pump its magma chamber full of water, extracting the heat. Cooling the magma rock would occur at a rate of one meter per year, meaning it could take thousands of years to eliminate the risk of eruption. The cost of NASA's plan is estimated to be 3.5 billion US dollars. However, the space agency expects the clean energy derived from heat extraction would offset this via lower power costs and the creation of geothermal plants. This plan only covers Yellowstone. It doesn't include the other half dozen supervolcanoes in the USA or the 20 others elsewhere on the planet. But experts say they rarely blow and Yellowstone only erupts every 600,000 years. And when was the last time it blew? Around 600,000 years ago, give or take a few millennia. Supervolcano stirs under millions in Italy. A supervolcano that last erupted nearly 500 years ago is showing signs of reawakening. The Campi Frigre supervolcano lies beneath the Bay of Naples in southern Italy and contains 24 craters along with numerous geysers and vents. According to scientists, there has been a recent decrease in gas pressure at the supervolcano. There has also been a recent increase in the temperature of the supervolcano's hydrothermal reservoir. The combination of these two factors means the magma may be approaching critical degassing pressure, which could lead to volatility and even culminate in an eruption. Campi Frigre is Italian for burning fields. The supervolcano is 8 miles wide and sits directly under more than half a million people. Combi Frigre spewed ash across Europe for eight consecutive days when it last erupted in 1538. The Italian government has raised the threat level of the supervolcano from green to yellow, meaning that it now requires scientific monitoring. Alaska's most active volcano looks poised to erupt. Experts warn that one of Alaska's most active volcanoes will be erupting soon. Warnings have been issued by the Alaska Volcano Observatory, an organization formed to study and monitor volcanic activity in the state. The Alaska Volcano Observatory has increased the alert level of Alaska's most active volcano, the Pavlov Volcano. The volcano erupted earlier this year, triggering a red alert, the highest of four levels. The latest Pavlov eruption in March sent an ash cloud as high as 37,000 feet into the atmosphere, covering villages and producing volcanic mud and lava flows. Eruptions of this degree cause issues for jet-powered airplanes. Volcanic ash clouds consist of small tephra, which are bits of pulverized rock and glass. These are only distinguishable from regular clouds via satellites in space. When these rocks and glass are sucked into an airplane's jet engines, they melt and coagulate, fusing the blades and other parts of the turbine, thereby causing engine failure. The eruption was the first for Pavlov since November 2014, and noted by the AVO as the most energetic since 1996. Pavlov is one of the most consistently active volcanoes in the Aleutian Arc. It has erupted six times since 1996, and 21 times in the past 50 years. Pluto may be home to ice-spewing volcanoes, 
A probe has found evidence of cryovolcanoes on Pluto's surface, suggesting the dwarf planet may not be as inactive as scientists originally thought. When NASA's New Horizons spacecraft flew past Pluto on July 14th, it scanned the planet's surface and has slowly been transmitting data back to Earth. The latest images show what appear to be two ice mountains, each with a depression on top, near the bottom of the planet's heart-shaped plane. The volcanoes, informally called Wright Mons and Picard Mons, are about 100 miles across and 2 and 3.5 miles high respectively. Unlike Earth volcanoes that eject lava, the structures on Pluto would likely release an icy slush containing nitrogen, ammonia and methane. Geological activity on the planet's surface indicates an internal heat source, possibly radioactive elements in its core. With only 20% of New Horizons data downlinked to Earth, scientists need to wait for the remaining pictures and data from the July encounter to confirm cryovolcanism on the dwarf planet. Could a new volcano be forming in New Zealand? Scientists say a buildup of magma found near a small town in New Zealand is responsible for thousands of small earthquakes in the area. The presence of the magma could also mean that a new volcano will form above the Earth's surface. A huge magma buildup has been discovered on New Zealand's North Island, near the town of Matata, in the Topal Volcanic Zone. Scientists using GPS data and satellite images say the magma has caused a 400 square kilometer area of land to rise 40 centimeters since 1950. The magma probably also triggered thousands of small earthquakes in recent years that were previously attributed to tectonic shifts. The researchers claim there is enough magma located 10 kilometers beneath the town to fill 80,000 Olympic-sized swimming pools. The magma could cause a volcano to form but the process would take hundreds or thousands of years. It is also possible that over time, the magma may cool and solidify underneath the Earth. New Zealand is home to several active volcanoes, but there have been none near Matata for at least 400,000 years. So maybe it's time for Matata's 650 residents to start considering a move. Alaskan volcano eruption could mean trouble for planes in the air. The Alaska Volcano Observatory sent out a warning to all aircraft following an eruption at the Bogoslav Volcano, the latest in a series of eruptions that first began in December 2016. Airlines were placed on high alert on Saturday after Alaska's Bogoslav Volcano erupted at 10.15 a.m., spewing a cloud of ash more than 30,000 feet into the air over the Aleutian Islands. Once ash enters an aircraft engine, glass in the ash melts as it passes through the plane's combustion chamber, which operates at temperatures as high as 1,500 degrees Celsius. The molten glass particles then stick to the turbine blades and bring them to a standstill. This can cause the engines to stall. The particles in the ash can also block the pitot tubes, which act as airspeed sensors. The blockage would give the aircraft false airspeed readings, which could be overlooked by the pilots. A red alert was downgraded to orange on Sunday after no further ash emissions occurred. Volcanic eruptions delay search for MH370 parts. Last week, searchers and media were on Reunion Island to cover the recovery of wreckage from downed flight MH370 from Malaysia Airlines, which disappeared on March 8th of 2014. The vanished flight also sparked the most expensive air and sea search and rescue operation in history. Little did the media expect to witness a volcanic eruption from Piton de la Fournaise, which translates as Peak of the Furnace. It is currently one of the most active volcanoes in the world, along with Kilauea in Hawaii, Stromboli in Italy, and Mount Erebus in Antarctica. The eruption, the third one this year, lasted for three days before ending Sunday shortly after 11 a.m. local time. Piton de la Fournaise is a World Heritage Site. Lava fountains were shooting as high as 40 meters and creating cones as high as 20 meters. The volcano was not considered dangerous because the lava flows down the east side of the mountain through an uninhabited area called the Grand Brule, or the Big Burn, toward the sea. The island's population is approximately 850,000 individuals, and many of them drove up the mountain to take in the volcano's fiery display. Japan raises alert level after Mount Hakone starts making small-scale eruptions. Small-scale eruptions have been reported coming from Mount Hakone in Japan. Japan's weather agency says that volcanic activity has been reported in the area around Mount Hakone. Small eruptions were reported June 30th and July 1st, with the agency raising the alert level from 2 to 3. 
Volcanic ash was found covering buildings and structures surrounding Mount Hokone on July 1st. Experts say the area subject to evacuation has been expanded to a one-kilometer radius, citing fears of landslides and debris falling onto residences in the area. Local businesses have been affected by the volcanic activity, with hot spring resorts unable to operate due to suppliers being unable to carry out maintenance duties. Small-scale volcanic earthquakes were also detected on July 2nd. Experts say unpredictable eruptions may still take place in the area, and authorities plan to continue observing the situation. Japanese island evacuated after volcano erupts. A volcano on a small Japanese island erupted on Friday, sending smoke billowing thousands of meters into the sky and forcing residents to evacuate. Mount Shindake erupted on Kuchinerabu Island, a small island in southern Japan, at 9.59 a.m. on Friday morning. After the volcano erupted and spewed a tower of black clouds into the sky, the Japan Meteorology Agency raised the volcano alert level from 3 to 5. The approximately 140 residents of the island were evacuated by ferry. A pyroclastic flow of heated gas and rocks flowed down the side of Mount Shindake following the eruption and made its way down to the ocean. No injuries were reported despite the suddenness of the eruption.